Well, everyone, happy Sunday or Monday morning to our friends down under. It is Mother's Day in many places of the world. So, of course, we celebrate and wish you a happy Mother's Day. We're excited you can be here. We come to you rain, sleet, snow, sunshine, thunderstorms, tsunamis, whatever. Our Sunday gathering will continue, continuing on. So I've said enough. Phil has designed our Sunday gathering today, so I'm going to pass you over to Phil. Thank you for that warm and wonderful welcome. As always, Sandra, it's a pleasure to be here. But I need to say Happy Mother's Day to all those mothers that are out there. And that title of mother can be extended to stepmothers, to mother-in-laws, to people like a mother, and even some of you fathers that are stepping in for mothers as well, as we all do. It is an absolute pleasure to be here with you. And as Sandra has already said, whatever happens, we're always going to be here because we know that you love to start off the week this way because it leaves you in a positive place and, and helps you get through the week. So without further ado, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen today, because each week we pick a theme and that theme this week is a mother's spirit and you're going to find out more all about a mother's spirit in a little bit from each of us in the address but mr darren Wynn will be doing our prayers and he will be doing the words of the week as well now got a little secret a little confession to make to you all each week when we do the theme yes sandra come a little bit closer each week when we do the theme we all pick the music well i had a little bit of help that help came from a mother sat at the side of me because she says all mothers like a certain type of music and certain people. So throughout this Sunday gathering, you will see maybe one or two of your best artists or artists that you love to listen to that may make you go a little bit weak at the knees, ladies, for many different reasons. But enough said. So, as I've said, Darren will be doing our prayers the words of the week and the address. Sandra will be doing the healing and the readings as well, as well as doing the hostess with the mostess. But also myself and Kerry will be doing the mediumship. And you guys, you're the ones that bring all that lovely energy and inspiration to us all. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand you over to our lovely Mr. Darren Wynn. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Phil. And obviously it's a great theme that we're celebrating and so far wonderful choice of music as well Kerry so well done <laughs> and a massive welcome to all of you you know episode what 164 wow or where have all those years gone so if you'd all like to close your eyes and join me for the opening prayer to our dear friends helpers and loved ones of that world we call unseen we unite here together today as one, as friends, brothers and sisters from countries within our lands. We come together here today with the same goal and intent within our hearts and our minds, to be of service in any way we can, to truly unite the two worlds together as one under that banner of We Don't Die. As we come together as one here today, we come together in joy, happiness and gratitude for all those in this world and your world that have that title of mother as we are celebrating Mother's Day here today as well. As we unite here today, we do so from different countries within our lands, speaking different accents and different dialects, coming together from different backgrounds and different understandings. But today we unite here together as one in love, peace and harmony for the greater good of all of mankind. As we enter into this Sunday gathering, we do so with pure love within our hearts and we come together putting aside our own wants, our own needs and our own desires. And we enter it in, into this experience with no demands or no expectations, but just in allowing ourselves to be immersed in your thoughts, your words, your healing balm and your unconditional love. Each and every one of us here today finds it's a joy and a privilege to work with your world hand in hand, side by side, and we truly hope we can be of service here today. As we enter into this Sunday gathering, we do so with joy, happiness and love in abundance so that we can create that perfect meeting ground in which our two worlds can come together as one. And we ask as always 
that that healing light continues to shine to all four corners of our lands, bringing the joy and happiness needed is time to all those hearts and minds that may be in need. So without further ado, my friends, we welcome you here today. Amen. Thank you very much, Darren. And for the reading today, I had a tough time, I have to tell you, finding the appropriate reading that would share really a mother's spirit. So I thought I would just include some short stories that really I feel encompass a mother's love. This one's from Talia. My mother had just finished taking a CPR class at the local college when she and I were in the mall and we saw a big crowd gathered around a still body. Mom took off running at top speed. I didn't know she could muster yelling everyone back. I know CPR. Just as she threw herself next to the body and was about to begin, a pair of strong hands pulled her to her feet. Ma'am, said a police officer beside her, we're trying to arrest this man. This one's from Karen. While rummaging through her attic, my friend Catherine found an old shotgun. Unsure about how to dispose of it, she called her parents. Take it to the police station, her mother suggested. My friend agreed and was about to hang up when her mother said, oh, and Catherine, you might want to call first. This is from Susan. My mother, a master of guilt trips, showed me a photo of herself waiting by a phone that never rings. Mom, I call you all the time, I said. If you had an answering machine, you'd know that. Soon after, my brother installed one for her. When I called the next time, I got the machine. In my mother's voice, it said, if you are a salesperson, press one. If you are a friend, press two. If you're my daughter who never calls, press 911 because the shock will probably give me a heart attack. <laughs> this one's from Betty. My mother was rushed to the hospital following a serious tumble. There, the staff placed a band around her wrist with the large letters warning, fall risk. Unimpressed, mom said to me, I'll have them know that I'm a winter, spring, and summer too. From Sheila, even though the toddler was having a furious tantrum, his mom was unfazed. You may as well give up on the crying, I heard her say as she led him to the exit. You are stuck with me for another 18 years. Here's one from my own mom, Marion. One night, my mom, my friend and I were watching the weight loss reality show called The Biggest Loser. Several of the male contestants were given the opportunity to call home and express their love for their families. It was a touching moment when these big guys were making these calls and my friend was definitely moved as she was drying the tears from her eyes and she very subtly asked, I wonder where they find such sensitive men. And out of the corner of my mom's face, she said, Krispy Kreme. Well, that's a donut shop here in the United States. We roared for laughter, not only then, but for years to come. And this last one is about my grandmother, Betsy. My grandmother passed one week before her 91st birthday. She did not have an easy life and she experienced a lot of grief with the passing of my grandfather. Most of her 13 siblings passed before she did and most of her friends had passed. Yet Grammy always remained positive and she never complained. Her favorite expression talking about the day she dies was, when God calls me forth, I cannot come fifth. She loved that. On the day she did pass, a kind but frantic nurse 
was trying to help Grammy and make her feel comfortable. You know what Grammy's last words were while she was on earth? She said to that nurse, God, it, she said to that nurse, honey, if God is calling me forth, I cannot come fifth. And that was Grammy. I love you, Grammy. We're going to go into our healing and I hope that those brought smiles to your faces. Moms can bring so much joy. Now, I know there are all different kinds of moms. I know for many, maybe the relationship isn't great with mom or some people don't have relationships with mom. But for our mothers and our mother figures in our lives, if we think about them, we haven't walked in their shoes. We have no idea what life was like for them. And one thing I know for absolute sure is if life didn't go exactly the way it did, we would not be here together right now. So I think for the moms and mother figures in our life, we really owe them some gratitude. As we go into our healing song, know that a mother's love is real. And even our moms that no longer walk this earth, they're still by our side. And as we get to see every week on our Sunday gathering, their love never dies because they haven't. We don't die. They are with us and around. Carrie has picked a beautiful song from Leona Lewis called Footprints in the Sand. So we can send some healing where it's needed. We can feel gratitude for our moms. And if you want to put a little smile on your face, have a little love in your heart on behalf of mom, I invite you to do that. One of my favorite songs as well. I love that song. Um, and what a perfect song to sum up what a mother is or how a mother behaves, if you like. Um, and actually it started, I had a thought on the trail that I was going to talk about. But then hearing that song, it's kind of changed it a little bit now. Because actually that's, that song sums up perfectly how a mother is, how a mother feels, how a mother expresses themselves. So today in the United States and many other countries throughout the world, we're celebrating Mother's Day. In the UK, we normally celebrate it around March time. So it's really weird. And it's I woke up this morning and when I saw Sandra's thing about Happy Mother's Day, I was like, oh, I've got Mother's Day. And then I realised in the UK it was a couple of months ago. Um, but then I, I kind of got to thinking it's, you know, we can celebrate Mother's Day, you know, whenever we want to celebrate it. I know it's fantastic to celebrate it all together and it helps us remember. I know, and the men can agree with me here. It helps you sometimes to, to have that thought of love and that for your mother. Because sometimes we can easy, it's easy forgotten, not forgotten, but sometimes we need reminding that we need to remind our mothers how much they are loved, how much they are adored. And Mother's Day is a perfect time for that. You know, thanking them for their sacrifices they've made for us throughout the years. And, you know, life can become busy, you know, as we all know, and we can forget sometimes to just take that moment and say thank you, mother, for everything you have done. And when we talk about mothers, like Phil said earlier, we can, you know, the title mother can go to so many different people. It can go to mothers, grandmothers, aunties, stepmoms, foster mums, you name it. And even those fellas out there can go to people that have played the part of his mother. And I know Sandra joked earlier about me having the, the babies, the rabbits and the cats and what have you. Um, and yeah, I suppose in a way we are their mother and their father, um, which I feel quite, you know, I'm honoured and proud to be that. But when we look at the sacrifices, it wasn't until I started thinking about it earlier, the sacrifices that our mothers truly make for us, you know, where from the moment we're born, they're there a hundred and ten percent of the time. They're there to on, you know, they're doting on everything we want, everything we need. They're they're there, you know. When you think at all the sleepless nights they have, not only us crying and keeping them awake in their younger years, but if you think of the worry and stress they've got, you know, is that is he okay? Because obviously, when we can't talk, we can't express how we feel. So think how. And I, know, I can only speak from my experiences, you know, I know we're laughing about me being a mother to the animals, but you do, you can't help but worry. And, you know, one of our, if one of our animals are ill, you're getting up during the middle of the night to go down and check on them. And, and you think mothers have done this for numbers and numbers of years when we were younger, worrying, are we OK? Is there something wrong with us? Especially looking at the media and the news now with all these different things going on. And, and all these new illnesses coming about, oh my God, are they okay? Are they going to be okay? Am I doing the right thing? And am I feeding the right thing? Am I, 
you know, and you do, you have all this worry and stress. And I thought, my, you know, I don't, didn't realise how much mothers go through um, until you stop and think about it. And then if you go on to school and then there's a worry, are you doing okay? Are you up to standard? You know, have you got friends? Have you tripped over today and injured yourself? All those kinds of thoughts. Um, and then you have the teenage years, which we've all been through. And we give, you know, we cause our parents, I suppose, a bit of heartache. You know, we start to rebel a little bit. We start to do what we want to do. Um, but you know what? At the end of the day, our mothers are still there, no matter how much heartache we've caused and how much trouble staying out late at night and not phoning them and all those kinds of things. But you know what? No matter what we've done wrong, our mothers are always there. And then you come to adulthood. You know, I'm in my 40s now. Um, but my mother's just down the road. Three years ago, my parents moved to the same town that I'm in now. I see them twice a week. I speak to them every day on the phone. But a mother never stops being a mother. You know, they're always there caring about you. And even though I speak to my mum every day, how are you doing? How are you getting on? How are you feeling? Do you need anything? It's all that nurturing, you know, kind of thing. And, you know, throughout our adulthood, money troubles, relationships, or you name it, mother's there. And you know you can pick up that phone no matter where your mother is in the world and you can have that heart-to-heart -heart conversation. There may be tears, there may be upset, but you know what? You come off the phone feeling better. Uh, and I'm sure we've all been there. I've been there. Um, and it's wonderful how mothers can make you feel. And then I think, and you know, we put aside one day a year to honour and celebrate them, whether it's we're taking them out for a meal, or buying them a gift, whatever it may be. And I thought, do you know what, we probably need to do it a bit more. Well, I do, definitely. I need to, do, you know, show my appreciation a little bit more, you know, because mothers are always there. Then if you look at us as adults, I know myself, when I look back at my mum and what she's done for me, you know, not only have I got all these fantastic, happy memories, but actually I'm a part of her. She's given me the morals or helped me to get the morals that I have today. She's kind of given me the attitude that I've got with life today. And she's kind of moulded me with the kind of behaviours and who I am. So it's true what they say. You really are part of, you know, where you've come from, you know. And thanks to my mother, she's helped mould me, hopefully, <laughs> uh, into the best person that I can be. Um, and then I started looking, what does a mother truly do? What What is, you know, if you were to sum up a mother, how would you sum up? And I kind of got to thinking about it. And I thought, mothers are loving. They love you no matter what. And I've heard it said so many times. And mum said it to me before. She said, I don't care who you are, what you are. I will always love you. They're caring. You know, my mum's on the phone every day. How are you? What have you been up to? All that kind of stuff. They're supportive. They may not agree with everything you do. But my mum's always been there supporting me no matter what I want to do. They're always guiding you on the right path. My mum never necessarily gives me answers. She always kind of... I have a conversation if it's an issue, but she always kind of guides or steers me onto the right path. Um, they've made sacrifices throughout their life, whether it's financial, time, no matter what it is. A mother makes sacrifices throughout their lives for us. They're that rock of strength. You know, when we're feeling low, when we're feeling down, you can always go to your mum and you can guarantee there's that rock of strength there. And they're that perfect role model. And then I looked at what is a spiritual person. And when I started thinking about what is a spiritual person, I got all the same answers. Loving, caring, supportive, guiding, make, making sacrifices, all these kind of things. And if you think in life, we're on the spiritual journey. And I know we come into a spiritualist religion, if you like, trying to get guidance, understanding, knowledge, whatever it is, you know, we're looking for. But deep down, I believe we've got that from our mothers already. You know, like I said, when you look at all the characteristics which make up a mother and put that in what makes the characteristics of a spiritual person, they're the same thing. So actually, I think without knowing it, for, since birth, we've all been brought up by a spiritual person, our mother, who has helped us already massively in this spiritual journey we're on. So for that, I am truly, truly thankful. And I saw my mum on Friday. And me and my mum's always, we're never serious, we're always messing around, laughing and joking. And as I was leaving her place, she looked at me and she was quite serious when she said it. And it kind of got me thinking when I left. She said, look after Scott. She goes, he will look after you and together you can look after more people. 
And I walked away and I thought, wow, my mum's never said that to me before. And it, I kind of thought about it all weekend. And when the, you know, I saw the theme was about Mother's Day, it kind of got me thinking about it again. And I thought, how true is that? Look after him. He will look after you. And together you can look after everyone. So now I hand you over to Phil and Kerry. Thanks very much, Darren. Thank you. And I was incredibly touched when Phil asked me to pick the songs for today. It only seemed right, didn't it, that a mother would pick songs on Mother's Day. And the first few songs, those first three songs, were songs that my own mother loves. And songs remove us from the present day and can transport us into days gone by. And I know for my mom, that's what music does. It takes her into the past where she talks about artists such as Michael Bublé, who we saw, um, Josh Groban, um, Doris Day, Nat King Cole, Frank Sinatra. Am I transporting you already to the films and the songs that you used to hear? Diana Ross, Johnny Cash. Those are the people where I play music and suddenly my mum is singing along to the words. She might not be able to be in the best place and um, within her mindset in that moment, but all of a sudden music transports her. And I got to thinking, I wonder as I get older, what my daughter is going to be playing me when I am in my later years. Is she going to know which songs move me, which songs take me back to memories? Have I shared enough with her to know? And her and I had a conversation yesterday. And we got talking about moving forward and what sort of things engage us and interacting with one another. Because Phil and I are on our travels for probably the best part of five weeks. And we've got people in the house and people popping into the house and visiting those that are left. And my daughter said, what sort of music do you listen to on the plane? Well, how fitting, seeing as I picked the music for the Sunday gathering. And I told her, and she said, I, I thought that was a type of music you'd be listening to. And I can just imagine the places and the memories, because I don't know about you, but every artist and every song takes me back to a particular time or place or person in my life. Some are before this gentleman's um, entry into my life. How many of you have songs that take you back to your high school days when life was simpler or maybe it was more complicated? <laughs> How many of you know songs that take you back to your first job or when there was a momentous occasion in your life and you can remember what songs were in the charts at that time? And then we have our relationships. Phil and I have some very dear songs that we play whenever we wish to reconnect with a moment. We have a playlist that just transports us regardless of what we're doing, where we're going, where we are. It transports us to a moment that is about us. And isn't that what music can do? Music transports us. Music reminds us. Whether your mum is still physically here in the physical world or whether she is in the world of the spirit, you will have songs you remember her by. Those important people in your life, grandmothers, aunts, uncles, mother-in-laws, stepmothers, fathers that were mothers, relatives that stepped in as mothers, you will have songs that remind you of them. Songs can sometimes bring a tear to the eye but it can also bring a smile to the face. And we move through those emotions, don't we? Where we might have a tear in the eye and then suddenly we remember something really funny and then we're laughing or we're smiling. It is really easy to say, always look at the happy times. Always look at the times that make your heart float. But actually we have to remember the times where we've lost people, we've lost moments with them, not been able to spend as much time with them because those are the moments that actually bring 
our memory of how much we miss them, how much we appreciate them. And that allows us to make sense and make the most of the time we have with them. Because when people are out of our lives and into the spirit world, they can still see us. They can still spend time with us. But that sense of loss and that sense of them not being there cannot be replaced, but it can be touched by music. So let music bring you to the place that you want to be in your memories with your mum. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Darren, for those wonderful, inspiring words. Um, what can I add? Except I think Darren's right. Mothers bring us up and in a way we are a piece of them that we shape our life or our mothers shape our lives to who we are. And I think there's a mother hen in all of us, whether we're male or female. I've got to admit and hold my hand up, I can be a bit of a mother hen myself. I heard Darren say last week that he didn't like going third. He wanted to go first. Well, he didn't say he wanted to go first, but I thought, you know, I'll let him go first. My week, I'll, I'll do that for him because we all care for each other here and for many others. But it got me thinking that what a mother is, because we celebrate Mother's Day and we make a fuss of them, don't we? We take them out for meals, maybe, or give them a bunch of flowers or give them a wonderful card with really touching words or we just spend time with them. But some of us have mums in the spirit world. Some of us don't have mums always around us. And our hearts go out to those reflecting on what life could be or how it could have been and what it might be like today if we still had those people in our lives. So going back to what Darren said, that we are part of them, they're living on within us. And a little bit of their character and personality is with us 24 seven through the rest of our lives. So it got me thinking, what is a mother's spirit? Because a mother is a very special lady. She's somebody that influences you in so many ways and does so many things, as Darren said. But actually, they're far more than that, aren't they? Because we have a saying here in the UK, if you want something doing, give it to a busy person. Well, I don't think there's anybody more busier in life than a mother. Because a mum is not just raising children. She's got a career. She's looking after a household, maybe, and a husband, and maybe um, friends and other parts of the family. So for me, they're very hard working because they never stop. But even though things might get tough, they still have patience. As we grow up, they really take time to let us make mistakes. Let us find our own feet, go on our own journeys, if you will. There's some kind of humility to them that allows them to do that, even though they might be screaming inside, oh, you're doing that wrong. But actually, it's that kindness that they have that allows them to do that, that allows them to keep on working, keep on persevering, keep on um, having that patience. And in some ways, I can only go off my own mother, keeping things simple. Simple makes life easy. One of my sayings is, happy wife, happy life. When I used to live at home, as long as my mother was happy, I was happy because I know I got looked after. And that's going back to early childhood. And I come from a, a large family of two sisters and two brothers. So you can see how we all pull together at times. We're not angels. We're not perfect. My mum still rings me up because I don't ring her often enough now. And she says, oh, I'm happy to see you're still breathing then. And it makes me chuckle at times because she's reminding me of all the time she was there for me. And it's only decent that we respect and repay that to her. But it brings me to another quality and a, a mother's spirit which is tolerance, how they put up with things, how they persevere through things. Again, letting us find our own feet, letting us find 
that understanding. And maybe sometimes when we're not the best at remembering things, they have forgiveness as well, don't they? They forgive us for all the mistakes that we may make. They may forgive us for not understanding or having that, what's the word I'm looking for? To say thank you, actually, for all the things they've done for us. Because sometimes we're busy and we don't get that time or we never think, even though we do feel it and do mean it from our hearts. So a mother is many things. And one of them is understanding. Understanding of everything that Adarin has said, Kerry has said, and myself. How they have that special understanding of life. And what to say at the right time. Because even though my mum would ring me up and say, are you still breathing? I'm glad to know that you're still with us. She's ringing through love, unconditional love. Still wanting to know, grown up man of 50 years old, he's fine and well, and my two brothers as well. That's what a mother does, and a mother will do all through her life, is give you that unconditional love at all times, and give us, give us what we need at times to help us in life. So a mother's spirit is very unique because sometimes we never know what they're going through. We'll never walk in their shoes of all the sacrifices they've made. But actually, what we do remember is how they made us feel. Thank you so much, Phil. Carrie, Darren, love you guys. It was about 25 years ago that I did a workshop and there was oh maybe 150 people in the room and the leader of the workshop said who here blames your parents for something in your life or here who here has not a great relationship with the parents so all these people got an opportunity to stand up and share what their problem was with their parents and then the workshop leader said I'd like to invite everybody from the age of 17 to 23 up on the stage. So up on the stage goes all these fresh faced young people. And he said, folks, I want to introduce you to your parents. I, that still moves me. That's one of those moments in life where I, I got a bigger picture outside of myself. Many of us, our parents were extremely young when they had us. And it's so easy to blame people for what we have or don't have or how things went wrong or how they should have been. But looking at these young people who don't even have their lives figured out, you know, it's said that our human brain doesn't fully develop till we're 25. Yet we're expecting our parents who are so young, who had such a different life. My goodness, they didn't even have the internet, you know? <laughs> We expect them to be so mighty. And our parents are like our rocks to life, our anchors. You know, they're the ones that kept us grounded. They're the ones who taught us our first everything. So it's so easy to think they should be perfect. But in that instant, 25 years ago, I got a new look at mom and dad. One of just people, just like me, with hopes and dreams. My parents had four kids. My mother had twins and then a year later I came along. That couldn't have been easy, having three babies at once while dad was a full-time airline pilot and he was gone. Five years later, my younger sister came along. I am so blessed that I have my mom today. I don't take it lightly. Carrie and Phil know them. They're gonna come stay with us pretty soon. And my mom couldn't be more excited. And hopefully Darren and Scott will come visit too. I take every moment as I can with her. You know, with any relationship, we don't know what's going to happen from one moment to the next. And I think the message is that I want to impart to you, whether it's a mom, a dad, or anyone, is to soak up the present moment. It's really easy to be caught up in our own minds, isn't it? It is, but our minds are gonna keep talking no matter what. We can stop them, we can be present, we can be 100% in the world of the person talking to us, 
And when we listen and really listen fully, there's some magic that happens. One, the right words seem to come out of our mouth, but two, we get a, a little view of what somebody else's life is like. I love asking people what they love about their life. Even with my mom, some funny stories or uh, her stories about growing up, whatever they may be, one thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to some laughter. And it's precious. I do know because I've interviewed plenty of people that did not have a great childhood and some people even had abusive parents. Again, I think forgiveness unless we really 100% walk in somebody's shoes, we do not know what their life is like. Not that I agree on some behavior, but for those people, they may not have felt like they had a choice, but to behave that way. Forgiveness is a gift that we can give ourselves. People in their life at the time they do actions, somewhere in their brains, they think it's the best thing they can do. And I also want this to land on you as well. Does anybody here have a little guilt? You don't have to raise your hand, but just think to yourself, is there any guilt? Should have done something differently. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. Maybe mom's no longer here. Dad's no longer here. What could you have done differently? What I want to do is take that away from you right now. Younger you made the best, best decisions at those times that you could. There's no going back. Obviously, if, if we could have a crystal ball and go ahead in time, we might choose to do things differently, but we don't. So give yourself a little freedom, a little credit for doing the best job you knew you could do. You know, the day my grandmother died and said, when God calls me forth, I can't come fifth. I had the thought earlier that day, because she was healthy and well earlier in that day, to give her a call and just tell her, I, I love you. And you know what? I said, I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow never came. I lived with that guilt for an awfully long time till I realized not only is Grammy still with me and I will see her again, but she wouldn't want me to have that guilt. Guilt is something that comes natural when we're grieving, it does. And the more we think a thought, the more we keep thinking that thought. So if you can catch yourself in the act of any of those negative thoughts, add some gratitude, put in your mind a time that you enjoyed each other's company and had some fun. I know with my grandmother and currently with my mom, there's a whole bunch of laughing that happens and that's a really good thing. So I just wanna leave you with a little forgiveness, a little standing in the shoes of someone else little of that self-forgiveness. We really have done the best we can. And last but not least, soak up the present moment. Whether it's a mom, a dad, your kids, a friend, your whoever you love, soak up those moments. Look deep into people's eyes. Listen like you're on the edge of your seat to what they have to say. Anything that you can do to put a smile on their face or maybe a little surprise for them, do it because it is in the acts of making a difference for another person that you truly let your light shine. So that's it for me and the address. Thank you for listening to us, everyone. We're going to move now to our demonstration of mediumship. And this is always a beautiful time just to let us know exactly how close our loved ones are. Grief is no doubt the most painful thing that we human beings deal with in life. It's awful. And we all go through it, whether we want to or not. The only way to the other side of it is straight through. There are some things, of course, we can do to lessen the pain. But to be here with not only Carrie and Phil doing our mediumship demonstration, but to invite in the loved ones that are with us. They can easily be in the room where you are right now, or some of you are out for a walk or maybe driving, they're with you. But they can easily just send their conscious minds over to Carrie and Phil and put some thoughts and feelings and memories and pictures and those good things during our demonstration. Our loved ones are together with us. During our Sunday gathering, 
we get a few representatives from the spirit world saying, we're here with all of you guys. So a few people in our gathering today will get a reading. I find it's always helpful if we listen to every bit of information that comes through. And you might just find you can take a piece of that advice or information for your own life. They speak for the masses. Truly, they do. When each one of them works, you'll hear them first give a few initial bits of information about the person who has contacted them. Could be a friend, it could be a family member, sometimes it's a little bit distant, so we really want you to listen in. They're quite smart, they know exactly who is with us right now. Even though we're connected on Zoom, they know exactly who's here. So don't think this is going to end up going to someone else, it could be very much for you. After they give the few initial bits of information about the person, if you can understand everything they said, that, hey, that's my person, we want you to press your raise hand button. Now, your person can no longer walk this earth. They are somebody who's now in the spirit world, okay? But if you can recognize all that information, press your raise hand button. And every week, I know we have some newcomers, and every week I know we've got some people who have done this before, but go ahead on your device, find where that raise hand button is, and press it for me. Uh-huh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, there's so many here, you guys, curmudgeons that don't want to play along. I see all your names. I know who's participating. I know who's naughty and nice. Oh, that's Christmas. That's another time. Now it should say lower hand. So go ahead and lower your hand. Great, you guys are good. Sometimes it takes a few minutes to get to the right recipient. Sometimes few people can take the information and it might take us a few minutes, but we will sort that out. If you are someone who works with one of our beautiful mediums today, I'm gonna to press something on my side, which will give a little pop-up box. It'll say the host would like you to unmute yourself and just say yes. We don't need you on camera. No, we don't. We just need your voice. And they will continue giving information or evidence about your loved one. Do us a favor, only say yes, no, or I don't know to the information that they give you. I know every week there's somebody who's so excited they want to volunteer information. We ask that you don't do that. We want everybody to leave here today knowing that our loved ones really are alive. And they are putting these messages and images and in memories and Carrie and Phil's minds, and they really are talking with them. What else do I need to say? I think that's it. Yes, no, or I don't know. Okay. And uh, we love to hear a song before we go into our demonstration. Another beautiful, fun song. I know you'll know it. <laughs> Picked by Carrie. Take some time. Just feel the love of your loved ones. You know, you might have to invoke your imagination to see them standing or dancing with you, but that's how it works. That's how they come through. We just need to get the ball rolling. So feel their love, see them and feel them in the room with you, and then we'll get started in our demonstration. So let me play this song, which is, well, I won't tell you because you'll see in just a second. That is such a fun song, and it was a good movie, too. Hi, Phil. Hello, Sandra. What you all couldn't see was Miss young Miss McLeod dancing in the background here. And just for a little bit of information, that is going to be the next Sunday gathering, all the way from Crete and jumping in the water. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> wouldn't that be if great? Only we could. It would be fabulous, wouldn't it, sort of thing. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, Sandra, and um, I'm just talking because I know I haven't got the spirit world with me, so get ready to work, Kerry, because uh, we never know. We never know what's going to happen sort of thing. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. So as I become aware of the spirit world, ladies and gentlemen, I know I have Father. I know that Father is a character. Um, I know that he would love nothing more than the family gatherings getting together, and I know here he would be larger than life, um, but I also know he had this wonderful ability to embarrass um, people. And I feel he's reaching out to daughter. And there should be a memory of him pulling faces and getting you into trouble uh, through laughing. 
uh, as well. Um, and there must be also memories with him at birthday parties and things, uh, Christmas parties as well, what I'm just seeing, where he would have had the paper hats on. And, and I know he was a little bit worse for wear. He had one or two drinks and he was fast asleep in the chair as well. Goodness. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I know one hand is went up straight away. Can anybody else understand all of this information? Press your raise hand button. All right, Phil, we are going to hear from Julia. Julia, can you find your unmute button? Hi, Julia. Hello, Sandra. Hello. Nice to have hello. you. Hello, Julia. Do you understand everything I've said? Absolutely. I do. Brilliant. And do you understand your father had the, that uh, wonderful ability how to embarrass you? Yes. Yeah, because it feels to... where he would, and, and I've got the, the feeling that he'd, he'd, he'd almost like he'd either shout things out or, sh or sing at the most opportune moments that would cause embarrassment. Yes. Uh, and it also feels with your father uh, as well. Like I said, he would pull faces and get you into trouble because it's almost where he didn't know when to be serious and when to just behave. <laughs> That's true. And and he, he was a person that really didn't worry about what other people thought. True. If I said some of his hab habits weren't... Um, um, how can I put this? Sometimes the spirit will give us things. Um, if I said if, if he had an irritation in his nose, he wouldn't be afraid to sort it out. I'm being really polite here. <laughs> yes, I guess that's true. Because it, it just feels where I, I, I want a finger up to the knuckle in my nostril. <laughs> um, I'm sorry <laughs> to paint it that way. But it's just he, he was so down to earth and you took him as you found him. Yes. But I also believe there's a side to him um how can i put this there's a side to him julia that would be quite frank and honest yes because i also believe if he didn't like you you would know about it yes there's an essence with him and i'm a little bit cautious of him because it's almost in a sense if somebody doesn't have the time for him or doesn't give him the same respect he would give them he just wouldn't interact with them yes i think that's true because again there's a sense with him but i also know there's another side to him as well where he would go out of his way to help people definitely and it doesn't matter what the objective was or what they needed help with. He would be one of the first to volunteer. Yes. And I also believe in a very selfless way. And how can I put this? Some things in life, we, we don't want to get involved with aspects of the family. It's their decisions. But I know if you ask dad for help in the middle of the night, he would come and help whatever the situation was. Yeah, that's true. And I also know there would have been a member of the family in distress in a particular situation in the family where he came in and helped them leave that property or leave, leave that household. Yes. Because I, I again, it's that side of dad where he's, he just, he wants the best for the family, he wants the best for his children, and he wants the best for them in life uh, as well. But again, your dad wasn't one for pity either. True. Because I also feel towards the end of his life where people showed him or tried to feel sorry for him, he would have none of it. True. Would I also be right in saying that he loved to help the neighbours out as well? Yes. And when I say help them out, it's almost where there should be memories where he was under a car bonnet at times. Yes, he was a mechanic. Ah, uh, please, don't tell him anymore. Right. That was my next statement, because I feel he had that ability, as you've said, he's a mechanic. Yes. Um, but I also feel with him... He had that attitude, if it's an engine, I can fix it. Yep. And that would be 
not just cars, but boats, lorries, anything that moved. Yes. And I also know that he was that skilled when people said they had a problem, he knew exactly what it would be and he could take the exact tools, the minimal amount of tools to go and fix that. Yes. And I also understand with him that he could make, make a fix out of nothing as well. He could make one? A there fix is. out of any, he can make a yes. fix of a car engine out of anything. And there must be memories where he fixed the family car, but either the tools were still in place holding things together until they got home. <laughs> That's yes. Because again, it feels here, I've had repairs done in my car by the emergency services, and I know they've done things out to the extra, and I know he has those skills uh, as well. Um, yeah. But I also know those tools should be still in the family. Uh, not so much. Then if they're not so much in the family, would you understand where they were given to people that could make the most of them? Uh, possibly. Because I know here, but I also know, um, Julia, you would have photographs of your dad where he is under the bonnet of cars. No, I wish I had. Mm, then let me just have a look at this for a second then, because I'm going to trust you with that no. Um, no mm. Thank you. I've just really looked at it. I'm going to take the photograph back. You must have happy memories of playing in the yard, Julia, when you were younger, seeing dad under the bonnet of the car. Yes. And it's almost even dad was busy. He was never too busy to interact with you. True. And I know you said you wish you had photographs, but he says you don't know, you don't need them because you've got the memories, not just in your mind, but ingrained in your heart as well. That's true. Dad could be quite sentimental underneath as well. Yes. And dad had a wonderful way of putting his arm around you, pulling you in close that made you feel safe and secure and made the world right. Yeah. And if I said that dad had a particular scent to him as well. Yes. Because I know since his past, you smelled those scents and it's brought you the memories back of him. And I know that has happened when you've been in low moments yourself. That's true. I have. Um, would it be right, Julie, it's been your birthday recently? Yes because he's just raised a little glass and said cheers and happy birthday. So I know on your birthday he was around and I know you thought of him and talked about him on your birthday birthday as well. I did. And with that, I'm going to blow you a kiss from him and say thank you very much, but know that he's around you, know that he's bringing upliftment. And remember, there was never a dull moment, even when things weren't going right, that always made things better and funnier in the moment. That's true. Thank you. And I'm going to leave his love with you. Thank you for allowing me to do that, Julia. Thank you for bringing him. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, good, Dad. Good, good. Good. Can't have a drink, somebody's just said, get on with it. So, okay, that's fine. Um, so I know here, um, as I become aware of the spirit world again, um, and my mind's going back to that video, I know that I have a mum here, and I know she would like nothing more than getting the family together and planning birthday parties. And it's almost like a almost like a dread that we know that mum's going to get everything together, because they're not surprises, we know about this. But I know she loved nothing more than being getting the family together and i know it's the little things like cakes and candles the candles for the birthdays number of candles for each birthday that she would love to do um and i know there should have been a present bought by mum before she passed for the lady i'm about to speak to because i feel she bought a present for her daughter 
before she passed and you received it after she'd gone. Thank you very much, Phil. All right, ladies, think back and who understands this information? No hands have gone up until Julia is back with her hand raised. Julia, can you unmute yourself? Hi, Julia. Hi again. Yes, that sounds like my mother. Wow. It shows, doesn't it, the persistence of a mother. We talked about the hard work and talked about, say, so, okay. So you understand everything I've said again, Julia? Yeah. Okay. Face, perfect party planner, yes. Okay, because it feels like it was her pleasure to arrange parties. You didn't have to ask, she just did it. That's right. And and I know before she passed, she must have bought you a present that you received on your next birthday. Yes, in a way. Because I, I know it's important that that gets to the, the right place there. But I also feel with your mum that she was very persistent. Uh, yes, she could be. And if I'm going um, to take that as a no, let me just look at it again to get more clarity on it. Would you understand where mum, where she was could be persistent, always wanted to do things the right way. Yes, exactly. Because I know it's not about everything, but it's about the little things and being done the right way. Um, and I also know, um, mm, your mum could be quite nurturing in her own way as well. And when I say nurturing, I just feel that she was somebody that co co coax people out of themselves. Yes. And I feel that this is one of the qualities as a mother she gave you because you felt that from her. Yes. And would I be right in saying, Julia, you've kept cards from her as well? Yes. And you pride yourself on that collection? Yes. Because I know mum is very sentimental, but I know she explains that you're very sentimental about those cards. And you sometimes get them out a few times a year. Yes. And I know the reason you get them out, she explains to me, is because of the sentiment and how the upliftment and inspiration gives you that power to meet, move forward in life. Yes. And you must still have some of your mum's Christmas decorations. Yes, lots. Because again, you get them out and I know here. Now, I know we've just had Mamma Mia, but you must like Abba. I love Abba. And I know your mum's around you because I know you play it at Christmas and she sees you dancing just like those ladies were dancing. Yeah. And I know you'd be the first one to sign up if we did a, a, a convention like we've just talked about, where they can jump in the water together. Because I know this is what she makes me aware of. Because I know mum is a big influencer. And I know, um, how can I put this? I know that, the, that she just wants everyone to enjoy themselves. Even people that are not of her family, she would encourage them to join in. Yep. And I'm going to leave that with your mum and your dad. And hopefully I can make the next contact with somebody else. Thank you so much. You're absolutely welcome, Julia. All right. Thank Happy you. Mother's Day. Thank you, Phil. Okay. And yes, it is Mother's Day. Okay. Um, no, what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, because I know we're short of time, I'm going to hand over to Kerry. Okay. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank very you much. so much, Phil. And welcome, beautiful Carrie. Hello. Hello. It's quite intriguing how parents of all both have the opportunity to say happy birthday to somebody. Mm. It's lovely. There's an intelligence there beyond that which we could even comprehend. 
So I know as I was sitting there, I had a young man with me and I know his son. And I know I'm looking for um, a mum in our audience, but I it could be dad is there and mum is in the background. But I I know that um, some would have been on a life support machine before he passed. And I don't want to open it up any further than that for the moment. Okay, thank you very much. All right, we have Shauna with her hand raised. Shauna, if you could press your unmute button. Hi, Shauna. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, Shauna. You understand what I've said? Shauna, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you understand what Carrie had said? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And you would know as your because that. I got that picture as I was sitting um, at the side there and he wouldn't give me any more, but I know I could feel his um, enthusiasm for, for working and for saying hello to you. I know that there would have been a number of people with you and him at the end. Um, it depends on how many numbers you're talking about. Okay, there was more than just you there, Shona. Yes. Because I know he gives me the impression of the people that matter are there in the room in those final moments. Yes. And I know that there is a sense of him. You must have felt your son close to you as um, the steps were taken to say goodbye to your son. Yes. Because I know he gives me this impression of wanting to say, I was there, mum. I also need to reassure you that there was nothing that could have been done, even though you asked the doctors and the nurses to double and treble and quadruple check. There was nothing that could have been done. Yes, thank you. I know with your son, there's a sense of... Um, you must have stayed in the room with him afterwards, Shauna. Yes. And I know there were words speaking. I can feel his emotion here because nobody wants to have the choice to say goodbye. Nobody does at all. And I know the sense of his emotion happening here, but he wants to acknowledge he heard the words that were spoken to him after the final steps were taken. And I know that there must have been moments with just you and him. Yes. And in those moments, you must have, there would, oh dear. There is an element of him wanting to acknowledge that when you, before you went to the hospital, you went through some of his things. I can't remember. Okay, because I get this feeling of then if it wasn't, no, I can't do you must have been handed some of his things beforehand, Shauna. Or yes. Yes. okay. If you didn't go through them, I know you were given some of his things. I also know that there's an impression with him of wanting to bring forward this personality of um see, I can do it, mum. <laughs> I can actually do this. And I know as he lifts that weight of that memory of his passing, his personality is freed to be everything that you remember it to be. And I know you have had contact from him, directly from him to you. Yes. And I know you would expect him to be very proud of that. I, yes. Because I feel this... Um, it's not even bravado, it's just a cheekiness about him, but a lovely cheekiness. I know that you have been looking, Sean, it would have been his birthday just recently. His birthday was on December. Then that's not recently. Then he's acknowledged, so there would be a birthday that he wants to acknowledge very recently within a close proximity, just before or after where we are. Um, that would have to be my mom. 
and it's very close yes okay and your mum's in the spirit world shauna no okay then there must be with your mum your son's your mum um if i could say that your mum your son is wanting to highlight his thoughts going to your mum you would know what he meant um no okay then with there must have been quite a close um, relationship between your mum and your son <sighs> I don't think I can answer that. Okay. Because I know your son wants to acknowledge the birthday that ha that is around about now. And I know this is the birthday, the celebration, and the moving forward and wanting to acknowledge that this birthday is about celebrating, not about looking backwards. Okay. I think that was probably April. So my dad's birthday was just at the end of April. Okay. Shauna, you, your son would have left a partner here. Yeah. Okay. And would you know the birthday to be in around them? Um, a partner as in, I, I'm confused. My, he's not married. No, no. But there would have been a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Oh, um, he had a girlfriend. Okay. For a short time. I don't know her birthday. Okay. Because I know this is very strong in here. I know this is a sense of him wanting to reach out. I know that he, you must have had an experience where he played a piece of music for you from Spirit Side. Oh, uh, yeah. Because I, he is again and again wanting to acknowledge that there is this push on his part to reassure you he is there. There's also an acknowledgement from him about the work you do to reassure other parents that their children are okay. Oh, thank you. And the work that you do has not gone unnoticed from the spirit side. There is an incredible amount of healing taking place from the work that you do. And this is your son's way of saying, Happy Mother's Day. Please know that this is his way of acknowledging that mo those moments before he passed. Shauna, you would know that after his passing, there were a number of other people helped. Uh, other people helped? What do you mean? I don't understand. Would you know where your son was an organ um, donator? No, he was not. He, I don't know if he was on his license. I didn't look, but he did not because I chose. Oh, okay. Then there, there must have been a discussion very recently between you and somebody else about organ donating and, and what that's about and how difference it makes for people. Um, I'm a nurse and I get that discussion quite often. Okay. Then please know this is your son's way of not only sending you signs, um, but also letting you know he's very, very close and hearing your conversations. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're so very much. welcome and happy Mother's Day. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Thank you, Shauna. Thank you, Carrie. Okay, I do feel that I am looking for another parent. And I do feel I have daughter here. And Whoever is in the audience would remember Daughter being on stage in a play or in a musical, but I don't feel that Daughter would have been very small. I do feel that this is um, at least teenagers, if not older than that, but you would have gone and saw her in a play or a musical. Thank you very much, Carrie. Okay. We have Elizabeth with her hand raised. Elizabeth, if you could press your unmute button. Hello, yes. Elizabeth. Hi. Yes. Hi. Hi, Elizabeth. You understand Daughter in the Spirit World? Yes, I do. And you would know that you would have gone and saw her in a play or a musical? Yes. And I do feel, although she was on stage, I do feel that she was actually quite shy. Um. 
Mm, no, not really, but she was reserved, but not really shy. Okay. No? Because I feel like she wasn't completely comfortable being center stage. Mm, no. It doesn't, this doesn't ring true for you. No, not really. Okay, hang on a second, Elizabeth. Okay. Let's just check. I'm not saying your daughter isn't here for you, Elizabeth, but I need to just check. Is there anybody else in our audience that understands this daughter in the spirit world that you would have saw on stage in a play or in a musical? Jane has her hand raised. Jane, if you could press your unmute button, please. Hi, Jane. Hi. Um, yes, except it wasn't in teen years. It was younger. And would your daughter have been very um, shy? Yes. And she didn't like to be center of attention? Absolutely, but on stage it was different. Right. Give me a second here. I actually, I'm going to... Sorry, Jane, I'm going to work okay. briefly with Elizabeth. Elizabeth, would you know that you are very shy? No. No. Because <laughs> I, I know I keep getting pulled back to yourself, Elizabeth. There's a sense with your daughter that um, if she wasn't very shy, then she must have been able to put on that shy look that said that butter wouldn't melt. No, not really. Sorry. Mm. I can't change this feeling of her. Um, I know I've just said butter wouldn't melt. So, Jane, I know your surname is Butterworth. You would understand with your daughter that she would have, um, in her shyness, she would have if she were on her own, wanted to withdraw from large groups or be on her own. She was very comfortable being on her own. Yes. Okay. I get the sense with her too that there would have been um, times where she didn't want to speak up for herself or make a fuss. Yes. And I know with her that there's this feeling of um, wanting to appease everybody and please everybody and knowing that she is, um, she's th she gives me the sense of not wanting to be the centre of attention within the family. Yes. And I know you said when she was on stage, she was completely different, but it feels as if she would have put everybody else before herself. Yes. You must have a little video of her on stage. There is there is one, at least, and I don't okay. have it. And I know that she has given me this impression of you can remember her being on stage, you can remember hearing her voice, and I know there's a sense of her um, singing within the home as well. Yes. And you must have little recordings or videos of, of her um, singing little nursery rhymes or little songs along to music in the home. Not sure. Singing, not sure. Oh, and you don't, you would have pictures in of her dancing and you can recall what was happening in that moment. Oh, yes. Okay, because I know she's bringing these memories to me. I know the sense of being reserved and shy and different on stage is her way of saying that she sees for you right now. She wants to bring that ability to be bigger than life and brighter than life and to enjoy life. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. And to really nobody ever moves forward or moves on from losing people to the spirit world, especially our children. But I know that she wants to reassure you, she is with you. She's very much present and very much wanting you center stage in your own show and moving <laughs> forward. Oh, that's beautiful, thank you. Okay, thank you, Jane, very much for working with me. And thank you, Elizabeth, 
I'm not saying your, your daughter isn't here, but thank you for allowing me the chance to do that for the other mother. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody, for allowing us to do this on Mother's Day. And come back in, Mr. Dykes. You guys are great. Thank you so much for just so being so generous on our Sunday gatherings. We, we love that. And ladies and gentlemen, I know there's many children that are in the spirit world right now. And if they could give you a verbal shout out, happy Mother's Day, they, they would. And please, on behalf of all of them, I know you can hear their voice still in their mind. Have them say happy Mother's Day. Their love is real. It's as if they've gone on a trip. They've gone first. The connection's not so good staying in touch. But I promise you, we will meet our loved ones again. We absolutely, positively will. Absolutely. So just some announcements. What's happening first in about a half hour's time, if you want to meet up with Carrie and Phil and some others, they have a beautiful conversation called Let's Talk Mediumship. Find out more about the world of mediumship, ask questions, always an engaging conversation. Also, Carrie and Phil don't have their live classes this week because they are going to be in Ohio and some of you are going to get to see them live and in person give them a big hug for me I'll be getting to see them the following week on Tuesday Scott has his sitting for the power hours he too will be traveling on Friday so we will not have our trance demonstration with him next Sunday we have a special guest medium while Carrie and Phil are away we have Dominic Bogue who's going to be with Darren and I for our Sunday gathering. It's always fun to have a guest. On May 30th, our friends Kath and Mitch Shirley are going to be doing a free grief cafe. It's a non-recorded special time where you can be with others and they are advanced grief special uh, therapists. So they really are engaging and really comforting and helpful sessions with them. Our new classes that we have in June We'll not have Carrie and Phil live, but virtually on our Tuesdays, starting at the same time we started today, we will have some practice sessions. So if you're a student in their classes and you want to practice with fellow students, you can join Tim and Shirley Ann for some practicing. On Wednesday, we have what's called a hybrid class. I've got some special videos of Carrie and Phil, so they'll be doing the lecture at the beginning and Shirley Ann and I will be putting you in breakout rooms and working. So everybody's invited to that. And then on Thursdays in June, starting at the very same time we started today, we are going to be doing some student demonstrations. So this is an opportunity for Carrie and Phil's medium students to demonstrate and get on the court practice. So the student demonstrations are always, always wonderful. You can find out about everything going on at we don't die.com. You can click on the store page. It is all there. Also, if you're at the we don't die site and you click above for the Sunday gathering, you can binge watch if you'd like a whole bunch of past Sunday gatherings. If you need a little shot of positivity, you can also sign up for the next Sunday gatherings. And if you choose to leave, leave a donation, you can do that there as well. No pressure on that, but we sincerely appreciate donations because they help us keep on keeping on. So you know who you are and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for giving so generously. That's it for me. I'm going to pass it over to Darren for some thoughts of the week. Thank you for that, Sandra, and thank you to all of you. Would you all agree with me? Life goes very quick, and the older you get, the quicker it gets. I'm always having this conversation. Oh, my God, life's going past so quick. Who would believe we're in the middle of May now? Wow, where's the time gone? And I was looking at this earlier. Summer's kind of barely started here, and probably where you, you know, in some of the other parts of the world, it's barely starting. Did you know it's 15 weeks until fall or autumn starts? Did you know it's 22 weeks until Halloween? Did you know it's 28 weeks till Thanksgiving? And yes, 32 weeks until Christmas. And then in 33 weeks, it'll be New Year's Eve and 2024, here it comes. And when you put it in perspective, you're like, wow, what, you know, look at time, it's just disappearing as fast as we can breathe and think. Um, and it most certainly does when you get older. 
And when you start putting things in perspective, it really makes you think more. And I know today we're celebrating Mother's Day and it's an amazing day to celebrate. But why wait for Mother's Day? Why wait for Father's Day? Why wait for birthdays? Why wait for Christmas? Let's seize the moment. Let's seize the opportunity. Let all those people around you know today how much you care for them, how much you love them. Let's not wait until the moment's gone. Let's not wait until our lives are flashed by. I mean, I know we can still speak to them in the unseen world and we can still meet up in the unseen world, but let's make the most of our lives now. Let's share that love. Let's share that gratitude. You know, let's not wait for those days to come and go. Let's do it today. So a happy Mother's Day to all of you out there that have earned and have that title as mother. Have a wonderful day. And thank you for being with us. Now, if you'd like to close your eyes and join me for today's closing prayer. We'd like to thank our friends, brothers and sisters from around the world for coming together united here today and allowing this Sunday gatherings to take place and joining together in the two worlds as one under that banner of We Don't Die. We'd like to express a sincere thanks and gratitude to all those friends, helpers and loved ones in that world we call unseen for being here with us week in and week out and allowing these Sunday gatherings to take place and having the faith and the trust in us to walk hand in hand, side by side and allowing your words and thoughts to be shared with all here present to bring us as moments of joy, healing and upliftment and allowing us to immerse ourselves in that healing balm and that unconditional love so that when we leave this Sunday gathering in a better place. We'd like to also express a sincere thanks and gratitude to all those in this world and the world we call unseen that have that title of mother for allowing us to be who we truly are and helping us to mould us into the true individuals we are today. For that, we are eternally grateful. As we leave this Sunday gathering and allow the sun to set on this day, we go forward to the dawn of a new day and a new week continuing down our own pathways and creating our own journeys. And we do this in the comfort and knowledge to know that you continually walk by our side, helping us, guiding us and inspiring us to truly be the best that we can be. And we must never forget to show the gratitude and appreciation for all those around us, allowing us to live the journeys of our life that we're living today. And as we leave this Sunday gathering, we ask always that the healing light continues to shine to each corner of our world to bring that comfort, that joy, that healing and that upliftment to all those hearts and minds that may be in need in this world today so we can make the world a better place. Until we meet again, my friends, amen. Thank you so much, Darren. And of course, my dear friends, Carrie and Phil too, and you guys at home, we love you so much. And a thanks to our friends in the, in the spirit world as well. And remember, they don't just show up on Sundays. They're with you. Sometimes you need to get the ball rolling, have a conversation with them, relive some memories, then have some quiet time and let them respond back. So let's go into our closing song. Well, all that needs to be said is happy Mother's Day. We love you guys and gals, and we will see you this time next week. Bye.